at the end of this lecture, you must be able to know what is inflammation, what are its characteristics and signs of the inflammation, what are the four lines of defense, and what is volume of effect. Mm, Assalamualaikum. I am Dr. Naila Javed. My topic for discussion of today is inflammation. What is inflammation? Inflammation is a protective response of the vascularized tissues to the injury. So, whenever there is a tissue injury, tissue injury can be in the form of chemicals, in the form of heat, by the bacteria or any trauma. So, there is the release of the multiple substances from the injured area. These substances in turn produce secondary effects in the surrounding uninjured area. The various substances or the mediators which are released by the tissues that may include histamine, bradykinin, serotonin, various reaction products of the complement system, our blood clotting system and the lymphokines. Lymphokines can be released by the sensitized T cells. Now, what are the characteristics of the inflammation? Whenever there is an inflammation in response to the tissue injury, there will be the vasodilation. Vasodilation of the blood vessels will lead to the increased blood flow. There will be increased permeability of the capillaries that allow the leakage of the fluid into the interstitial spaces. There will be the clotting of the fluid in the interstitial spaces that is due to the increased amount of fibrinogen and the proteins which are leaking from the capillaries. There will be the excessive migration of the cells such as the monocytes and the granulocytes into the tissues and ultimately leading to the swellings of the tissue. Now, the signs of inflammation. The classical signs of the inflammation are redness, also called as rubor, increased temperature of the local area, also called as scalar, there will be the release of the vasodilator substances from the tissues, pain and swelling, also called as edema. Now, the feedback control of the macrophages and the neutrophil responses. Whenever there is injury to the tissues and inflammatory response occurs, there is activation of the macrophages. These activated macrophages in turn release tumor necrosis factors, interleukin 1s, granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factors, granulocyte colony stimulating factors, and monocyte colony stimulating factors. TNF and interleukin-1 secreted by the activated macrophages act on the endothelial cells, fibroblast, and lymphocytes, which in turn produce granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factors, granulocyte colony stimulating factors, monocyte colony stimulating factors, and these in turn will act on the bone marrow to release granulocytes and monocytes. How the neutrophils are attracted towards the source of the infection? First of all, margination will take place. What is margination? It is the lining of the WBCs along the wall of the blood vessel. Then, diapedesis will take place. This diapedesis is the squeezing of the WBCs to the walls of the blood vessels. There will be increased permeability of the capillaries for WBCs. And then by the chemotaxis, they are attracted towards the source of the infection. The lines of the defense. There are four lines of the defense. Most important, first one is the tissue macrophages. The macrophages present in the skin and the subcutaneous tissues are called as tissue histiocytes. There are various types of the macrophages because macrophages are present not only in the skin and the subcutaneous tissues, but also in the various organs of the body, such as in lungs in the form of alveolar macrophages, in brain in the form of microglia, in the liver in the form of Kupffer cells of liver, in heart in the form of myocardial macrophages, in the kidneys in the zingual cells. We will discuss it later. Then, there will be the attraction of the neutrophils towards the source of infection and increased production of the neutrophils by the bone marrow. These neutrophils by hemotaxis and diapedesis and margination, they will be attracted towards the source of the infection. There will be the increased number of the neutrophils which is called as neutrophilia. Third line of defense is the macrophages in vision. Third line of the defense is the monocytes in vision. Monocytes along with the neutrophils from the blood enter the inflamed tissue and they become macrophages. After invading the inflamed tissues, monocytes are still immature. They require hours 
or more to swell to the larger size and they become phagocytic. And the last is the increased bone marrow activity. Increased bone marrow activity is the fold line of the defense. Here is shown the um, different types of the macrophages which are present in the body. For example, within the bone marrow, macrophages in the brain, microglia in the liver, buffer cells of the liver. These are the macrophages. Myocardial macrophages, intestinal macrophages. This picture shows us the migration of the neutrophils from the blood into the inflamed tissues. Whenever there is a damage to the tissues, there is the release of inflammatory cytokines. These inflammatory cytokines in turn increase the expression of the selectins and the intracellular adhesion molecules on the endothelial cell surface. These in turn combine with the receptors which are present on the neutrophils and neutrophils are attracted towards the source of the infection. First of all, by the margination, then by the diabetes through the walls of the blood vessels because they increase the gaps between the endothelial cells. And then via the chemotaxis, they are attracted towards a source of infection. Now, what is the walling off effect? Walling off effect is separation of the injured area from the surrounding uninjured area. It is caused by the fibrinogen clots that block the tissue spaces and the lymphatics. Its importance is that it delays the spread of the infections or bacteria the surrounding area. Intensity of inflammation. Intensity depends upon the degree of damage to the tissues. For example, staphylococci invades deeply, so inflammation will spread rapidly. But the streptococci does not cause intense local tissue damage, so it has a less tendency to spread. Thank you.